And then as a um, kind of a, I guess, a sneak peek or an early teaser for those of you who are here early, um, I am a big fan of one of the newer fonts we've had. And this one's been around at some point in the middle of last school year. It's been around. So we're talking eight, nine, ten months type deal. Um, this is open dyslexic font. And I have no clue exactly how this works. Let me uh, just bring it to the front. Edit, arrange, bring it to the front. But as you can see, some of the letters are heavier. The L's are quite leaner. You can see there, there's different weighting in different sections. Apparently, based on a lot of research, open dyslexic font works rather well as a readable font for students with dyslexia. As a teacher, I'd consider making this your default font when it comes to templates and whatnot. Uh, my daughter is dyslexic, my oldest. She's 24. She's she's managed quite well, but for so long, it was a coping mechanism to read. It was amazing she was comprehending anything because her fluency was so slow as she tried to decode the words and get through it. Um, I would imagine that a tech teacher who works in a school with all of those classes, you know, there are a half a dozen or more kids that are not diagnosed dyslexic, which are um, so I would encourage considering using Open Dyslexic as a font for templates. Now, I set mine to default, so just as kind of a, an FYI, um, to do that, you can go up to your profile icon, which I've decorated mine, uh, come down to settings, and within your account, you can also set dyslexic, Open Dyslexic for you know students' accounts as the default font too, but I'm just going to go with my, uh, my account. I can come down, you can see language, Whole nine yards, objects, collaboration, text. You pull down the text and select which one you want to be the default. So kind of like with, with Word, you could always say, oh, I want Times New Roman, something like that. So um, FYI, kind of a, a little bit you know, personal message there, but uh, I am a fan of it being available. It's an open source font. And um, although I do not understand the science, the research is enough to convince me to give it a try. So a little teaser there. Uh, and for those who have just joined us, um, if you could tell me what you teach in your experience with Wixi, are you basically new or not new? It's been the general um, one or the other. Uh, that would be, I would appreciate that. And we're about ready to start. And here's my contact information too. I'll bring it back up in a bit. There you go, Alicia. Oh, that was April. I'm sorry. Of course, April. You love Wixie. And uh, yeah, meeting experience, Alicia, the stuff with music is uh, quite spectacular, actually. All right. Tracy, what are we doing? Are we recording this thing? We are recording. The transcripts are already running. Everything <laughs> is uh, ready for you to jump in. And then we have until 11.05 mm -hmm. for this session. And I will drop in the attendance link as we start to round things down around 11 o'clock. So um, Scott, go ahead and take it away when you're ready. Thanks. Thank you, Tracy. Excellent. Um, this session is a little bit, and right now I see mostly people who have some level of experience with Wixie. This session is kind of intended or will likely turn into more of a, a, a scattering. There might not be a smooth flow, but a jump from tool to tool. If you have questions, if you need clarification, something else, please, please just uh, rather A, turn your mic on or just you know uh, throw a message in the chat really quick. And between Tracy and I, we'll get it to our attention and get it answered. So again, don't hesitate. Uh, this uh, There isn't a hard, hard script going on. So as you probably noticed, uh, at least at some point this school year, Wixie's interface did change a little bit. Um, we used to have uh, students tab was up here, new was over here. Um, the lists across the along the left hand side in the tool uh, menu here would include um, assignments was up here and assessments, and there was definitely no favorites. And like I said, the students was up there, so we've kind of streamlined the the list on the left hand side. Um, if you're not using favorites, it's great because you can actually tag templates that you like and put them into your favorite section. So when you're scrolling through existing templates and you're like, oh, I, I like that one, but I'm not gonna use that till next month, you can always tag it and have it available later, which I'll show in just a moment. But uh, basically, we see the list along the left. Um, big additions, the what do you want to do today is pretty much the exact same thing as the new menu. The difference between the new menu is, I think the big one is between the landscape and portrait options. Um, typically when you do paint a picture or 
every time you paint a picture, it'll go with the landscape view. The other thing you can do is upload files. So you can upload PDFs, FYI. Um, so if you have a worksheet that you want to bring in and then add components to, uh, we saw a lot of people bringing in PDFs during COVID instruction. Uh, but you can uh, upload files or even images or photos or stuff, but typically the PDF file, which you can't add when you've already opened up a, a project, you can start with here by opening it up and it'll show up as a file in your My Project, which you then open and edit. Making a book, open straight to the book template, which is the, the trifold. We have quite a few themes. You can always go for blank. Um, but if you bring in something, here's a you know, fall title of the booklet template. And basically when this shows or plays, it is a flipbook. And of course you can copy and duplicate pages. You can delete pages, you can modify as you want. But if you are doing something sequential with the kids or even just stories, it's not a bad place to start to get that format in place. You can actually start straight to a talkie if you want. It'll open up a blank template and bring you to a talkie, which I'll revisit in a moment. And of course our search menu now is across the top and our learning center is here. In fact, let's start with the Learning Center. For the longest time, up until last uh, this past June, if you wanted to find a Wixie resource, you probably went to our website. You could find stuff under the Help menu in Wixie, but most of the integration resource, all of the integration resources were on our website. We started to add a few. And there's like, how do you want to use Wixie with second grade? How do you want to use it with elementary science? How do you want to use it with SEL students or math or PE or whatnot? Um, we decided we wanted all of those resources to be in Wixie, and we have pretty much everything here. In fact, there are resources on our website, but that's for people who don't have accounts. As a potential uh, triple E teacher, uh, as someone who you know is checking out Wixie and trying to encourage their colleagues to come along uh, with your you and your journey, this is a great place to find something and possibly share it with those colleagues. Believe it or not. Everything I'm talking about today is in the Wixie update section, which is in the news at the top. There's a simple presentation with a couple of the highlights and kind of an announcement, but the path animation, the family share, adding videos and characters, QR codes, you name it, is all here. So this is a summary of that. If I return back to the Learning Center and scroll down a little bit, because you can see the list over here, but these are all here. Guides for coaches, guides for library media specialists, I mean, digital storytelling, three or four of them, they're STEM and STEAM, uh, different ideas for take tens, and then lesson ideas. I talked about both grade level and um, subject areas. If you are an experienced Wixie user, you may want to consider signing up for our newsletter. And the nice thing about this is, is new regulations. If a company is emailing you and they didn't get your permission, they're actually breaking the law. Things have got really particular. You just can't Assume they want your message uh, unless you've registered in some capacity. So if you want our monthly newsletter uh, via email, you need to sign up for it here. And it's just that simple form. The other things you may want to do when you're here under the center settings is set grade levels. It's like, you know, I'm showing everybody. So I'm going K-8 or pre-K-8. You may want to say, I teach second grade. So show me one, two, and three. And then you can say, I'm a classroom teacher. And you can uncheck the rest. There's a library media coach, an instructional coach, computer teacher. So. You do not need to see the middle school uh, files, you know, if you're teaching second grade, as I mentioned. So set your settings to your grade levels. It'll help with your searches. So for instance, if I had set second grade and I went to math, the only math integration ideas I would see would be something that was tagged to second grade. And again, many of our math uh, are gonna cover multiple grades anyways, but here's PBL templates, writing a data sort. There's a more PBL templates, sorting decimals. There's algebraic concepts. You know, here's math and literature, time storytelling. 13 days of Halloween, it's your chance to do accounting one. But when you open up these, you're going to get information. You know, it does kind of a uh, engage, create mentality. This is the activity. This is the engagement. Here's your create. Here's the templates that are available. And here's how you could share and available resources. So. Uh, what's nice is it, it's not necessarily less than observation quality. Uh, some of them are very detailed, though, but it's an, a way to get an idea and to get resources to guide you along. If I was to do a faculty you know, training and I had 10 minutes, I'd actually have teachers spend a little bit of time in looking at these different uh, grade level resources under the ideas. As we continue down, again, effective integration, learning strategies, literacy, product ideas, integration guides, training courses, by the way, you got a brand new teacher. They can always do the fundamental of Wixie. It's kind of a step-by-step -step, uh, guided um, 
process in which you can learn Wixie by doing these little little activities. There's eight of them, kind of mini tasks. Um, lesson ideas, training resources. Yeah, and, and what's great about this too is you can still, from the profile icon in the upper right can't corner, search a help menu. And the help will definitely fund the training center because the help is all technical. How do I do collaboration, you know, teams? How do I uh, disable collaboration? Uh, how do I add a photo? How do I do this? How do I do that? So that'll show up under the help menu here. And you can see there are new features that are outlined here and how to do them. And then, of course, different things. If you were looking at modifying objects, well, what did you want to do with it? Code music with text-to-speech on objects. Yep, you don't know how to do that? I always make an object play a note, which is how we get our keyboards to work. Um, so I'm going to return to home, but again, one-stop shop for pretty much everything, not only integration ideas and resources, but also then the help menu from the profile picture. So now let's get to some good stuff, some new features within it. I'm going to go ahead and choose paint a picture. As you can see, the layout's almost identical. Um, we really don't see a huge uh, difference. We do see text, image, video, and the widgets. Of course, you're available. You know, you're knowledgeable with the text. The image library continues to grow at a tune of about, you know, I'd say, between 30 and 50 a month. Most of our images are added based on requests from teachers and schools. We're not going to put your mascots in, but of course, if there's images you know first grade could use, and we know that other schools would benefit from it, it gets on a development list. It could take a couple of weeks. It's not like we have ready for you tomorrow. But if you ever need anything, send me an email and say, Scott, boy, I sure wish there was this because we would use it to do this. And that's all it takes to get you on the list type deal. Um, the important thing to know here, too, whoops, is that under the video icon where you've always been able to take a video, you actually do a video, you can add videos just like an audio recording that lasts up to five minutes in length. Um, your speech therapist should be using Wixie, by the way. This is a great artifact creator because you can capture the movement of the lips. So this way when students are reading or doing whatnot, you can, you can capture that artifact for the 504 meeting or IEP or whatnot. Um, of course, if the kids are dressed up or they created a model, even their science experiments, by the way. I love this for science because if they use the device and pull the camera around to the back so they can take a picture of stuff, they can move around the science experiment and talk about it. And then when you know the experiment actually occurs, you could have someone documenting it as well and then commenting on it with uh, reflective audio recordings or whatnot. So I love the camera for this, but it is important to know that we do have a video library now. So there are, I want to say there's like 200 videos, maybe a bit more. Uh, but these are, you know, in some cases a GIF and something that just moves simply for five or 10 seconds or elaborate. Uh, again, not so much play, but hopefully adding to some type of, you know, project, uh, science or social studies or whatnot. And you can, of course, get videos from file if it was something recorded at school. The widgets library, little resort, but it does have the talkies. If you're ready for the next step, and I've talked about this a lot, you know, you can add one audio recording per page that lasts up to five minutes in length. And that's each page is five minutes. In my humble opinion, as a former elementary and middle school teacher and a, a district level integration specialist, a, an integra a passionate integrator, if you will, if you're not using the recording tool in Wixie, you're really not using it effectively. Now, I understand the primary kids, you know, you're doing a lot of drawing and stuff, but do you expect those kids to type? And of course you don't, maybe a word or two. Having students draw a picture of something, a water cycle, a scene from a story in which they're gonna make a prediction. Uh, of course, my their family, my family activity. And then adding an audio recording, explaining that process, that that cycle, that, of course, that, that part of the story, whether it's even beginning, middle, end, or as I said, predictions or retelling. Because it can last, the recording can last so long, a lot of these recordings are right off the top of their heads. But as kids progress through the grades and their assessments, especially summative assessments within the units, become more sophisticated, the opportunity to do things like public service announcements or interviews, or of course, pretending to be something, things that, that move kids beyond listing information and have them apply that knowledge meaningfully. And that's when we start to also talk about higher level thinking skills. So the basic recording is one per page. And again, it's pretty sweet and pretty easy. And to me, that's when you start to really assess the students meaningfully to capture their knowledge and understanding. Now, doing that is a good enough for me to say, okay, you're probably using Wixie effectively, but if you want to step it up for the kids, particularly your intermediate kids, use the talkies. Has anyone used talkies before? I see some nods and thumbs up in the pictures. There we go, there we go. The talkie library has expanded, and this is also another one that if you really wish there was a talkie or something, you can let us know. 
Um, we put them in categories. We we probably doubled in size. If you don't find that dream talkie, just remember that under add a face, you can't add faces, but you can also just add a mouth. So, I mean, if the kids are talking about types of quadrilaterals, I mean, you're talking about like a snooze uh, you know, lesson as it is. And, of course, more than likely, and math is so good at this, you just list stuff. You don't explain it or process it, so to speak. You say, okay, square, four equilateral sides. You got parallel perpendicular lines, or actually you have parallel lines in this case, and, and uh, perpendicular in the corners. And then you got um, you know, opposite sides or this or that. Um, I like the option of, and I'm going to come down to shapes, obviously talking. And oh, there we go. Now, these already have mouths in it, so I just need a regular shape. Because uh, I want to add it. Where are shapes? I'm running slow. Symbols, shapes, tangrams, geometrics. You know what it is? I actually think there's a shape stick folder. And there it is. All right. So if I want to go in and bring in a type of quadrilateral, um, I may need to draw it from scratch, which I could have done. But let's say I want to do triangles. This time I just jumped away from triangles. But we're doing obtuse, acute, um, and equilateral triangles. I can go ahead to that talkie. And I could bring in a face, or if it already had one, I could just do a mouth. I think of adding a mouth to like animals as well. So you could make a talkie uh, out of any sticker or photo by just putting a mouth on top of it. If I go ahead and grab another talkie, something a little bit more, something more of you know a person, for instance. Do we have a pilgrim? We do. There's a pilgrim. So. With all of our talkies, it's great because it isn't a matter of just open and close. The actual movement of the mouth, which is a triple image, is aligned with the movement of the sound file. So as someone gets louder in their sound file, the mouth will obviously go wider. And when it's uh, softer or there's a pause, it gets narrow or thinner with the mouth. You could do typing here. You could do speech to text. And the nice thing about if you wanted to do speech to text and have it read is you can choose a voice at even the default speed, but you can choose a voice. We got three English and three UK. I think the kids really love the United Kingdom ones, but because it's a cute accent, right? But the um, thing is for some kids too shy to record, they could do this instead. Although they are still speaking with the speech to text, it is an option. However, the third choice with talkies, really to record it up to five minutes in length. I'm gonna do one. Get that three-second countdown of the recordings. Um, hello, my name is Scott, and I am a pilgrim in uh, colonial America in the year, colonial colonies, I guess, in the year 1765. Uh, pause and stop as much as you want, just like you could before. When you press stop, you can listen and try again, or you can keep it. And again, when I try it, recordings. Um, hello, my name is Scott, and I am a pilgrim in uh, colonial America in the year... There it goes. Okay. So here's what I want you to start thinking to do. Your kids could use this, but think of the integration ideas that involve in this. For instance, why not, if you are going to stick with the Pilgrim, why not set up a template? And I'm going to go back to widgets and talkies. One of my favorite talkies is the microphone. Where's Mike? Okay. Now, Mike's pretty awesome. Mike, he's a little flirty. He winks and blinks and does all sorts of stuff. Think about creating templates in which the students respond to a question asked by you, the teacher. Now, that you could be a, pure, you know, I think of even like a periodic table element for older kids, but a type of energy. You could be a famous Marylander um, for, is that fourth grade? You could do, again, history. You can do science. You can interview a raindrop in a water cycle. Because the talkies, you can have multiple talkies per page, now you're having the ability to add multiple sound files per page. So with this recording, it's just one per page. But with this, you got, you know, of course, you can do multiple. The talkies will read comic book style top to bottom, and if it's tied, it's left to right. So you could, as the teacher, add a recording to the talkie. The students would come in and record the answer or response to that question. So some of those tricky ones like Colonial Virginia or Colonial Marylanders, sorry, brain merge there, you could easily ask the questions right out of the curriculum guide. You know, what was life like back in the 1600s? You know, and they say, well, it was difficult or this like that. What are some of the things you did? And whatever those socialized indicators are, you could even line it up in that capacity. You could do this in teams and have the kids do both the Q and the A as partners, but I think it's really nice to set them up that you are enabling the questions um, or asking the questions, you're structuring it, and then them answering it. And you basically can do three or four in which you just duplicate this and possibly customize each page. 
the talkies go in all sorts of directions too. I, I talked about the interviews, in this case, the public service announcements. You can have a lot of fun with the kids and what they do with this. Any questions with talkies? And again, this is just one of many things. We had students recording how to read numbers. So there'd be a number on the page, you know, five comma 637, and they had to read it, you know, as the talkie. Um, so I think they actually put a mouth on a coin and said 5,637 or decimal points or whatnot. So things like that, too, you can get really creative in how you do it. Um, next, I want to go ahead and move back to the home page. Scott, it looks like we have somebody uh, raising their hand. So, oh. Kathy, did you have a question for Scott? Kathy, I can't hear you. Scott, are you able to hear? No, I'm not either. Okay. I didn't see the oh. microphone mute symbol, but I couldn't hear you. Oh, Kathy, try again. Uh, yeah, okay. we got you now. There you go. Um, if I if I put an image on there, is the uh, is the student able to access the image as a, uh, as their own and if if we make a copy like they'll make a copy in their own file and they'll that it, same image they will have complete control over it is that right correct um when you sign in a template such as this and we're going to go ahead and assume that it's you know it's four pages long yeah there are like three different places to assign it but when you go to file and you can assign it from here and assign it to your kids right when they open up, like you said, it's at the top of the page. They open up; it's their copy now. They don't mess up your master, and they can do whatever you know you want them to do with this file. Great, thank um, you so much. Yeah, if you bring in a photo, I mean, if I'm a librarian, I think about doing even school rules this way and stuff like that, or library rules or school rules, but also welcome messages, uh, things like that. And that also reminds me now: one of the options under the uh, share op share menu is QR codes. So we're seeing more and more examples where students are are generating a project via a QR code for others to scan at some point. For instance, if I have a math night or could even be back to school night, I know we're way past that. If I have an evening event, I think like an art night, my elementary school I worked out had an amazing art night, and you saw it went around and saw these projects, you could have some electronic art projects and the parents or anyone interested could move up with their phone and scan it and then obviously look at the art project and where the students kind of told about the artist and what they emulated as far as the style, their artistic style, what they liked or didn't like about it. So there's not only the project, but a reflection. A welcome messages to your school, a little lobby up. You could also start doing QR codes in newsletters. So this will allow you to share via a QR code in which you can have the digital copy of the QR code and then insert it in something or you can just print it straight out. One of the easiest things you can do, Kathy, I'm so glad you asked the question. This actually comes from Wicomico County. Um, the librarian did book talks. Why do you want to read this book without spoiling it? So, you know, you're definitely going to want to read Charlotte's Web. It's a unique story of a, a special friendship between a spider and a pig. And the kids would export the QR code. They actually printed it. And you can see they just cut it and put it on the green screen of themselves. The teacher, the librarian, then laminated it and stuck it in, in all over the classroom. And kids would go around, scan, and listen to it and decide if they want to read it or not. And this got pretty popular. The kids actually, she switched to doing it in the bookmark template in Wixie. So you brought in the digital copy, you put the QR code on it, and then you would decorate the bookmark. And when you're done, you can put your bookmark in the book. So if a kid pulls it off the shelf, they could, you know, scan the QR code, and then they'd use the bookmark as a bookmark. And this was done originally, I think, with third or fourth grade. And, you know, kid, you got those kids who just love books. You know, they're so passionate about the library and the books and things. She said it doesn't matter what grade you're on. If you want to make your own book talk, um, you can just as long as there's not a bookmark in it. You know, make one that's for a new book. So it's things like this that allow you to uh, celebrate and, and kind of publicize is the wrong word. But you can definitely um, share. The kids can easily share what they do. So there's a, there's a purpose as far as an audience goes. And the QR codes is just one of those things that it's kind of been around, but it's now defined a little bit more and share uh as well so i like that there talk about jumping around there we go in fact let's talk about share has anyone utilized the family share option All right this is the the super new hotness carla says no nope. thumbs down so check this out when i am looking at students work yeah, like I sound like I'm about to start a rap song by Eminem. Check this out. I go into my classes. I got the third grade class. I open this up and I say to myself, you know what? 
Nina's mom and dad probably want to see this. This is a good, maybe even it's a kid with an IEP or a 504. I should share this with them so they understand some of the concerns we have. Or of course, you're celebrating success. Not super, super awesome projects, but things that are simple, but you're yet still proud of what the kids are doing. I could share this to individually to Nina's parents with a single click, assuming they registered, or I have another place where I can click for the whole class. So a message goes to the whole class. Under the share options, assuming they had done it, I could actually click on family. And the family, anyone who had registered with a first name, last name, email, would get an email message with a QR code link. Now, it won't go into their Wixie account. It just goes into a viewer. So they don't access the kid's account. They just see it. And how does this work? Kind of what's going on? So check it out. As I'm looking at the kids, there it is again. So sorry, I got to stop that. I come down to the left-hand corner, and I choose principles. And there's this family communication invitations. This has generated a single file with two, four, six, eight, nine kids. I'm so lucky. Nine pages. Here's Elsa's page. And this QR code is unique to Elsa's invitation. Nobody else's, just Elsa's. This is a new QR code for Danielle's. This is a new QR code for Alejandra's. So what's wonderful is this can be sent home. Piece of paper, I know. But sent home, or you can try to email. But you can send it home. Anyone who scans it can, of course, register. Mom and dad, maybe grandma watches the kids after school every day. Maybe you still have other people you're super close to you want to include. Parents are separated. This is really nice, too, because they can both get in on it. It's not one or the other. But So anyone who registers can. And then when you click that family share, you just click the button and the message goes. There's no more to it. And if it's an assignment, and again, I don't have a class set up, but if you've done it as an assignment, uh, do I have one for like this class? When I click on it, and everyone assumed would have a project, I would also have the ability under demonstrate the assignment Is it here. Mark all is complete. I wonder if it's because I only have one project. That's not allowed times. Oh, I know you can share it. Where is it? Oh, darn it. There's a single click option for sharing for the entire class at one instead of one by one. And although I am stumbling on that, I know I can tell myself, okay, you know what? I need to refresh my memory. Where is that? Lo and behold, under the Learning Center, there's going to be something specific to the family share. And that is down here? family sharing, integration guides. So this actually describes the process in detail. And it has been set up as a book. Scott, we have two questions about the family cool. sharing. The first one came from Jennifer. Jennifer says, will this work if the family signs up and the classroom teacher and librarian both send projects? Or do parents have to sign up twice since nope. it's two teachers? And thank you, Tracy. I appreciate you bringing that to my attention. Just it's a one-time deal. So um, if, and I don't know if you like regroup for like fifth grade in your building, but if they, you know, if they move to four, like middle school, they move to like four teachers for content or two teachers back and forth. It just needs to be signed up once. And then any teacher who works with that student would have the opportunity to do family share. So if the classroom teacher does it, Jennifer, and the media specialist just wants to piggyback on it, so to speak, again, it'll be great if there's no kid, no sign up for that student, uh, but it'll line up if it isn't. And I saw there was a spot for the class project that you go to. Um, and then our next question my, seems yeah. to kind of <laughs> piggyback off of that one about, um, does it follow the student year after year? So you said it's a one-time thing. If no, I, I actually do think it'll be new every year. Okay, um, so so each year they might want to carve the first out a little year, bit of time for that. I'm not 100 sure, but I kind of think that'll be the case. Um, just because sometimes family dynamic shares uh, changes. Excuse me. Um, there was a close friend that you wanted in because you know you just did, and then you decide you don't want them anymore. Although we can remove things at our end, I think it's a refresh every year. So okay. it's going to be one of those first week of school uh, type deals. Good to know. Okay. Oh, April actually showed me how to do it. Yeah, April jumped in there. Apparently, she's she's poking around in there. She found it. She said, if you check all of the projects at once, um, then click Merge, and then choose Family Communication. So thank you for sharing that, April. <laughs> nice job, April. So as April told us, check them all. In this case, there's only Jamie. Do the merge, which is how you can take individual class projects, by the way, and merge them into one file. So if you're working with your primary teacher or you're working with a primary grade and you want to do what I'm thankful for for Thanksgiving, you could take each kid's file, and this was an addition two summers ago, and merge them into one. And then that'll be in your account, which you can then show the QR code or, you know, post it 
you know, if you want to, whatever. But um, the merge icon allows you to do the email scan. Yeah, I really appreciate that, Rachel. Thank you. Um, oh, you know what, Jennifer? Oh, wait, pages first. Sorry. I teach 20 different ones. Sure is, Rachel, or Paige. Let me show you that next. Let me finish with this, though. Jennifer, I am not sure. Because the rubric is usually a display component, not part of the project. So I'm, I'm going to say I'm not sure, and I'm leaning towards no. Again, in April, of course, the kids can. Um, when a student is working on a project just like I am, so I'm going to go back to my project. And actually, I'll tell you what, I can log out, log into a student's project or uh, account. Oh, you know what? No, students can't share URLs. I think the only way, because the um, the security reasons, a student could not share a URL unless the default settings for the district level indicate that that's an option. And most security will not allow it. So what they would need to do is actually open up their account and share it with mom and dad in that capacity. So it's one of those uh, open and hand off at, on a device at, at home, or of course, you know, come over and see from the laptop. Um, but actually, I should log in as I'm thinking. That was a good question. Um, open up a, uh, hey, look at this. There it is, a mic project. And again, my school district might be set, tech for learning might be set something different, but a teacher can easily copy the URL and share it with someone else. I don't know. There you go, April. Surprise me. See if that link works. Oh, Paige, you found it. Yes. That's great, too. I don't know. Scott, that link worked for Jennifer? me. And again, I don't know if it's because my school is special or not. You could try to see if a student can share with you if that'll work. I'm still assuming that it won't. Um, usually we default a lot of the privacy things to allow us to present better, uh, which is why I'm saying I don't believe students can share a URL with someone else, such as their parents. They'd have to open it. Jennifer figured it out. Great. You guys are awesome. Um, and Paige, you found it out. Again, for those of you who are unaware, when you go to your pro – oh, this is – got to log out student account. I have Jamie's image there. She's a fifth-year senior at York College now, so some of these files go way back. Um, if you go to your profile image in the upper right-hand corner, come down to settings. And of course, from here, you go to my classes. And again, you can do a nickname here. The nickname is for you only, Paige. Please still be appropriate. <laughs> but uh, definitely go ahead and rename them to whatever makes it easier for you. Uh, and they'll be just for you. This is also, by the way, where you can show, uh, you can share a class with a teacher. Um, however, Where's the custom classes? Here's the family. You can actually look under the families tab to see if anyone has or and this is where you can print it from the settings too. Has or has not added my students. QR code for user cards, profile image. I wonder if we'd see if a parent has added here. There is a way to manage that. Um, and then back to home. Sorry. Um, I do want to talk about path animation as well. Sorry, now I'm really still jumping around. I see that, Jennifer, maybe in the future. At a new page, if you are unaware, you can animate anything that's an object, meaning a text, image. I don't think you can animate a video. I think it'd be crazy moving around. So if I want to bring in, for instance, um, a person, let's just say running, and again, searching by text or dictation, so runner, press enter, Love runner. There we go. That's fine. This guy's better. So if I bring him in the page, my options now include rotating, gluing, copying, all sorts of stuff, but you can animate objects. So when you slide that animation over, it defaults to a straight line that isn't very long. But once you select the uh, arrow for additional options, you can modify it, run here to here. Uh, let's have him run over some hills. I'm going to try it. Oops. Try it. Oh, yeah. I wish it was the other way. This way? Maybe? Yeah, there's the running over the hills. Loops the whole nine yards. So if kids are telling a story, they're sharing some information. I even think of the the, um, the rain uh, drop for a water cycle. You can add animation to it. Uh, to me, it hopefully it has some purpose beyond just play, but the kids can do animation. We see the kids doing, you know, 
planets rotating around the sun. We see kids doing, of course, movements uh, for science that are related. Um, and of course, sometimes when you're telling a story, tall tale, fairy tale, things like that, your original story, even about my family, this can have some uh, some purpose. So just know that the animation is there and it's a pretty big deal. Um, I think a lot of people could think of animation ideas just off the top of their head. So. April, I see your last comment too. I'll tell you what, if you email that to me, sorry for the tangent, I'm gonna forward that onto the development team. I'll recommend that we look at adding that in the future um, because that is a neat idea. I really like the kids being able, I mean, this way they could create, they could, you know, there is some ways under the file menu and share that you could do via email for a student. I should say that, but the students can go to the file menu, come down to share and choose via email and type in someone's email. Um, Maybe that's what it's going to be instead. Because I think of them drawing like a birthday cake and singing happy birthday grandma, right? So there they are. They've been singing happy birthday grandma. They want to share it with grandma. And again, if we're just going to assume this is a birthday cake here. If they go to file, share, share to family. This is even better. They could share to family. I was thinking uh, sharing links. So. April, no need to request the tool. It's already in here. Um, and I, I I don't know why I didn't know that one. Sometimes it's like I haven't used it in a while, but kids can go to file and share. And anyone who's registered with the family will get that link. So they could do happy birthday grandma, but still send it to everybody, but grandma's included. And of course, um, what I'm thankful for, I actually think that would be cool if the first graders did it. There's even a cornucopia template what I'm thankful for, and then they share it with their family. Um, so it's not from you, it's from them. Um, yeah, they, and I know a holidays, Valentine's, you think of the same thing. Maybe it's a New Year's resolution, so now it's holidays. But on the science side, maybe goals, personal goals for the second quarter or third quarter, um, you can just think of those more personal projects, that sharing. And I'll tell you what, you'll be the most per popular teacher on that soccer field uh, sidelines as the parents brag about, you know, you, you, your kids, their, their children doing this uh, and you, you nurturing that or allowing that to happen. So um, that would, that's pretty cool too. All right. I learned some stuff all the time and that's kind of a reminder that that was there, but just the options are kind of, you know, they kind of explode. I hope you all have that kind of like, Ooh, I could do this, 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 and this with it. Um, I got to log back out. I do want to take a real quick look at the, um, the templates again and the way to add favorites it's ridiculously easy um the templates have been divided as they were last year into two folders we've just kind of relabeled them curriculum activities are templates that have an, an obvious lesson objective we know you're going to work on decimal points we know that you're going to work on fluency or reading comprehension or that you're going to do something with um geographic features the design templates are much more open-ended you know so curriculum activities um digital citizenship month by month we see all of these here uh, in fact, when you go into month by month, social emotional learning was one, you go into November, and again, always th seasonal stuff, different directions. There usually is a choice board. Let's see if it's here. Nope, I didn't see one, but I'll look for one. There's a music one for, she'll be coming around the mountain. Here's a choice board. If you're unaware of choice boards, these are kind of neat. Um, this is your emergency sub plan too, if you ask me. What's wonderful is you could, from the comfort of your own home, assign templates. And what's great about these choice boards is here's this primary Thanksgiving choice board. This is a link to six different templates. So the kids can choose which one they want to do. So you get a little buy-in, you get a little engagement. Um, sometimes if you know you're teaching, you can, you know, you know you won't be there or you know you're doing it, just say, well, we're not doing the survey today. So you can choose any one of the other five. You could edit this, customize it, and cross that out or, you know, delete it completely. Uh, but you can always give those instructions to the kids. And here's that component I was talking about. If you want to make it a favorite, boom, there it is. So now I don't have to look for it like, oh, I got to go into, where was that again? Curriculum activities, oh, month by month in November. It's just now when I go back to my main page, it's under favorites right there. And in fact, you can see the I am thankful for template. I'm going to open it up. This is under month by month November as well. And although it says uh, write a list, I think you stuff it and then you do a recording. Um, and I assume everyone's okay with the assigning process. Uh, again, it's very straightforward. 
Um, it happens instantly. So if you're having one of those mornings, the kids will get the assignment straight away. It's not like it takes overnight to process or anything. Um, so if today is the first day, you know, the kids, if they're in Wixie, they may need to refresh to see it, but it's not like I said, it takes overnight. And the last thing really isn't critical. It means the kid has not opened it up in that time frame and it disappears, which probably means they haven't been in school, you know, because they would, they would eventually open it to get their own copy. So that's the only reason the end date is there. And again, back to the templates and the libraries. Wow, we had over 4,000 now. You know, I go into like math, for instance. I remember back in the days when it was black and white and kids chiseled on stone. When I was teaching, we did explorer cubes in fifth grade. Some of you may have done character cubes. You may actually make a probability cube with shapes or numbers like a, a dice. But we don't know what you're going to do with this. So that's why it's in this folder. So there's cubes and other folding th 3D things. I'm going to go back to design templates. Um, there's a whole folder about all about me, which many are multi-pages. Um, the folder I want to go into also is general. If you're looking for something creative, especially those days, you know, if you're looking for the day before winter break or things like that, or you just want the kids to, you know, we're looking to have a good time and I want to get this information from the general folder. I mean, there's a snow globe. What are you going to design in that? I don't know. You can do anything from, uh, again, different geometric shapes where they're doing different snowman objects using three circles, three squares, and three triangles, uh, choice boards, design your own T-shirts. There's my house. I love the chairs. They're doing call-out bubbles instead. Um, newsletter templates, line paper, by the way, for touch screens. A lot of journals and notebooks in here. So art portfolios, all sorts of things. Um, and again, the list, there's wanted posters and trifold or brochures templates here. And of course, because we have one in the house, we got to go back to curriculum and music. And again, a, an image will speak when you click on it, that yellow, yellow talk button. Uh, but we also made it so that if you recode it, you do some coding, it'll play a pitch instead. So of course, I'm going to try it. So we see kids. That... With that. So, and the boom markers are a little bit better. The instruments are there, music teacher. I hope that you're fully aware of this folder. If you want to get into how it plays a pitch, I think there was even a help uh, option. There was a help under objects and make it play a pitch. It's really easy to do. Of course, you can copy and paste, but I know that person was here as well. Um, don't forget your school folders. Anything you put in the folder can be viewed by not only your colleagues in your building, but students as well. This could be the ultimate emergency sub plan if you, you know, if it could be really bad, because if you put something in the school folder, it could sit there until kids are told to go find it. So when you go to the school folder, you can actually go to new and add a subfolder, which is here. So new folder because you're in your school folder. So you can do grade five like I did. And then in grade five, you can open up in a new folder. There's Mr. Loomis's and here's mine. So I can put some templates that I can use with an emergency subplan. So instead of that real thick binder in the bottom of your file cabinet, you could have just a couple of pages directing kids for you know this lesson to do this or that. Of course, you can obviously, we're gonna use Wixie here, but we're gonna do worksheets here or whatever. So I know those are there as well. Um, I do wanna talk some of the other things from the um, from the review, and I've been just using this one here. Um, under the text objects, you can obviously copy, duplicate, and do whatnot here. And I think I actually might need to. You can animate the text objects. You can do hyperlinks. And the call-out bubbles have been realigned. Um, but as it shows in the, and I'm going to go ahead and go back to Learning Center, what's new. As it shows in the review, you can also do um, special characters. So it says, when using and typing in the text box, there's now a button that links them to integrated dialogue of special characters. So you do not only the math ones, you can also do the different language ones with the ends and you know, for, for ESAW students or whatnot. Um, and those are going to appear on the smiley face in the upper right-hand corner. So if I do that, I go home, bring it here. Which, where's the smiley face? See, I knew I was missing something. Oh, I got to start typing. Hello. So once you get started, you can go ahead and click the smiley face, and that will give you the options for not only emojis, 
But if you want to use those special characters, because you need them for the students you're working with, different general terms from copyright to whatnot, and of course the math for the, the to the power, or of course the basics, you know, fractions or whatnot. So just know that after you get typing, that is there as well. And just to be sure I didn't forget anything as we've jumped all over, and I even feel a little scatterbrained because of it. Um, and I haven't thrown in any dad jokes. I apologize. Give me a couple minutes. See if I can work up a good joke for everybody. Um, we covered path animation. Again, this is great because these are links to, to do different things. Family share. Again, and here's a guide, by the way. So um, you could always do an email to parents as well or post something in a, a newsletter, uh, maybe the monthly newsletter, that if parents have any concerns, they can obviously, uh, well, I don't know if the guide is for them. No, it's more for teachers. I would still know that if you want to notify teachers or parents, you could, and just know that this is highly secured. Like the Department of Defense uses Wixie with all of their elementary schools around the world, and the vetting included going to the Pentagon. Um, so we uh, we meet the top safety standards when it comes to student privacy uh, for products and for information. Um, so don't worry. Don't. Uh, I mean, you can assure people, uh, you know, with confidence. That's where I'm going there. Um, videos, imagery printing to QR codes and displaying QR codes, the learning center, student assignments, and of course, favorites. There we go. I covered the batch. Um, any questions? Is this moved down? Samantha's referring to, to basically what, like as a crop tool when it comes to, you know, if you have a photo and you want to get rid of everything but the character or the person, uh, Kathy says, let's see. All right, let's see if I can find a good one here. Add a new page. Um, I might be able to just bring in an uh, uh, image. So image from my file, pictures. Uh, let's go to green screen one. Um, here we go. This one. Let's see if this works. Okay. Open. So Oh, she. there's a side here. We'll see what happens. But basically, it's just this icon here, a filter. Magic. This is actually a... Scott, we're still seeing your your family um, sharing in the Learning Center. That's so. right. Um, yep. You're over on another tab. Yep, yep, yep. As you said would happen. All right, let's go back. That's so you could play that audio, though. That was important to play the audio. All right. Um, let me just know, I'll open up this project here that you guys can see. I'm going to add a new page again. I'm going to go ahead and find an image from file. Um, here's a kid with a microphone. Let's see if he can do this one really easy. Now, I unfortunately do see a handful of shades in here, but basically when you select an object, it's just a filter choice. So AI is kicking in to help us here, and it's looking for defined edges. It gives us this wheel action until it's, and Gabrielle was where had Sheila was too. Sorry, guys. There it is. So now I have him. I can put him, obviously, if I wanted to bring in a page picture instead of a color. I can do it in Habitat. Um, yeah, Meadow. Him. I can also flip and rotate him, which is here. So now he's ready to talk as if he's live. And I love things when they report live from locations. The Boston Harbor for the tea party, any biome. Even I love it when they pretend to be animals. You're a squirrel. You know, I'm a squirrel. My name is Steve. I live in the coniferous forest. Let me show you around my home. And the next pages are going to be basically exactly what the indicators are asking. We you know, identify uniqueness of the animal life, plant life, the weather conditions, and then maybe special conditions. So they would have a page on each one of those. Um, so it's basically a green screen functionality uh, that we definitely love. All right, that's a great kind of show and tell. I am caught up there. Somebody else have something? Nope. Scott, I know one of the things that I was super excited um, to hear about this summer was that um, teachers can now add co-teachers. I think that simplified the process for our media specialists for getting classes because they can just yep. be added to their classroom teachers, but also so many of our teachers have a co-teacher or a teaching assistant or someone in their classroom that they might like to add. I, I think that would be an awesome thing to show. I, I yep. you know, it's the middle of October. Most of you guys know this, but if you didn't, you can add co-teachers now. It's awesome. Well, not only that, but you can now provide access to classes in your building by yourself. So when I go up to the setting profile, 
my uh, profile icon and come down to setting and I go into my classes, I can see my classes. This is where I can give a nickname and this is where I can share it with a colleague. All right. So if I, and this is where the nickname would show up too, by the way. So if I, Mr. Davis is third grade, I want to share it because my co-teacher or an aide in the building, here it is, Amy now has access to this. But I got to be honest, uh, Amy was nice enough and I work with fourth grade or third grade, excuse me, but, um, or Mr. Davis was my other for, uh, fourth grade teachers do not share a third grade. If you click the pl plus sign, you will have access to every class in the building and you can check which classes you want access to. So you don't need to wait for someone else. They can do it themselves. So this is this is kind of new. This didn't happen in the update. This happened since then. Uh, so if you have an aide, uh, a resource teacher, you can just go ahead and, you know, you can rather guide them or you can give them access on your own if they're not as tech savvy. Um, but again, that happened under profile icon settings and my classes. Um, code teacher icon or plus um, to get access to the entire building or to any specific class you may work with. And this is really nice for like the guidance counselor and things like that. If um, or people who don't necessarily have a class but could, you know, definitely they work with those students. I think it may be a um, like a divorced parents group or things like that. Conflict resolution activities in which it can be huge. And even then, once you have your class access, you can make your own classes by pulling kids from different groups. So, you know, if they're doing a um, divorced parents guidance counselor with fourth and fifth grade students, they could actually go to each class and pick the kids that are in this group and make their own class and then assign. Can you remove classes when you're assigned? Oh, I know what you're talking about, Sarah. That would be a dream, wouldn't it? Let me see. Yeah, we ended up um, with like all of the homeroom and the math and, and stuff. So now we have like a lot of classes. So I did nicknames. So the ones that I need are at the top. But I was just wondering if we could get rid of the ones we didn't need. All right. I am not sure of this one. And who knows? The answer might be there. But I'm usually really good at this. So I was depressed or sad at myself that I didn't know the first one. I want you to send me an email on this one. Um, uh, for real this time and ask about is there a way to unselect classes? I'm worried about the data syncing at night because um, You would have to make we'd have to make changes and you have to say, you know lock these changes And that's fine and dandy this year, but next year you'll actually you'll still be in the lock setting Because every night the data from the district wants to say give this class access That was my first thought um, as well, Scott, that PowerSchool tends to take over those things. We we have those issues across some of our applications where, you know, can I unenroll a student in this Brightspace course? And sure, you can do it, but if PowerSchool still says they're in that class, it's just going to put them right back. So, um, so yeah, um, that'll so be something we can investigate it's whether it's yeah. possible in Wixie, but it, it may be something that has to be changed in PowerSchool for that to stick. Because when we make manual changes to the data from the administrative account at the district level, which checks for configuration and accounts and everything, there's a will, there was ability, there is a will, ability to protect changes, to not be overwritten by that download. It just makes me believe that you could have that option. And then come summertime, we just unprotect everybody and the new settings apply for the next school year with a new group of class configurations and some old, some new students mixture up. And then you'd have to do it again and protect it. So... I'm going to say send it, and you can keep it really simple. You can basically just ask that question. You know, can we remove classes? We are we're assigned, and I'm going to elaborate and pass it on to the development team and the CEO, and let them uh, take a look at that option. Uh, the big caveat always is I have no clue how, what kind of man hours are required to do the programming, and and I know that's a deciding factor when it comes to changes is what's involved. What seems simple, maybe you would be, you know, could be 20 hours of, of labor. So that's where it comes down to. All right, I appreciate that. Um, Lastly, I just kind of want to reiterate, I'm going to bring my contact information up. Um, because doing virtual trainings is such a common thing these days, I am willing to meet with any teacher, grade level team, anyone at all one-on-one -on -one to do any kind of Wixie review. Um, if your art teacher is interested in using it for portfolios or your speech therapist, like I talked about using the videos, if you want to share my contact information, they're welcome to reach out and I'll meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. If they are brand new to Wixie, the first meeting typically takes 20 to 25 minutes, but otherwise I try to keep it around 10 to 15. You guys, 
got a lot going on. So let's do these in little helpings or servings, if you will, with just a specific you know content tool or feature or usage or whatnot. I also do integration discussions, fourth grade, you know, you're starting to do this. What are your possible ideas? Same thing with media specialists. Um, so if you have anyone in your building, uh, even Triple E, I mean, I know you guys are trying to support, but you only have so many hours in the day. Don't hesitate to pass my contact information on. In the old days, I used to have to drive to your school, and that was that's where all the time happened. But now, you know, I got to be honest, I'm still wearing pajama bottoms here because I'm at home and I'm I'm uh, comfy. So it's like I can do these meetings without traveling, and it's a really easy thing. So take my contact information down here. Of course, Tracy has it, as well as do her colleagues from the district. So if you need to reach out to them, I do live in Baltimore County. That's where I taught for 14 years. So um, I am in your time zone, and I'm local um, as well. But uh, don't hesitate to, to share my information. Tracy's got the uh, tennis list up one more time. I know you've been riveted by my content uh, and uh, wit. So, uh, you know, if you've been distracted, please get to that now. Um, was there, and let's just do a survey, because again, some of these sessions can be a little flat compared to others because um, we do so much jumping. Anyone have one new feature they, they can't wait to use, even if you maybe knew about it before? Um, one new teacher that kind of resonated, maybe even got a little wow. Yeah, April's love on the panel share. Yep. And I think some people dig into the path animation so much more than others. Oh, Kate, I love the idea of reporting live from location. Yep. That is a newscaster, not even a participant. Either way, you know, you could be broadcasting about the Boston Tea Party or you could be a participant there. there. Kate, you got a question? Go uh, for it. No, we were getting ready to start our new unit in CKLA and they're talking about the body system. So I was thinking very Miss Frizzly, we could do something with like reporting from the, you know, skeletal system or something. Well, we used to do, they used to have magic school buses that would fly around. You could, Going through the city. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I think that's awesome. And again, it's that engagement, the creativity that also is the retention of knowledge. We, we know it's true. When they can connect it into something personal in their brain or some experience or whatnot, that knowledge won't go away. Um, anything but bolted list. Great idea, Kate. Thank you for jumping on and sharing that. Miss Mays loves that idea too. And again, just remember the animation, you're just moving something around. It's not like we could have actually made him alternate running if there were like two poses or something. Uh, you're just moving around, you could do the circle, you could do all sorts of things. But the samples through the learning center are pretty intense. The, they're rotating the, the planet around the sun in which they actually have the planet disappear on the backside of the sun because the way they've layered it, it's pretty cool. So no worries, Jennifer, once you have your image, and again, uh, oh, I actually need to bring in more of a photo. Um, I'm gonna go back to my main page. Uh, here, will it show up again when I select them? Here it is right here, it's the filter. So you gotta select it, you gotta have your hands around it because then, or, or handles, these are handles, and then you do just the filter tool. So it's just that little one there. It is, um, well, I gotta be honest, I don't think it was part of the summer's update either. In many cases, we have things we'd like to get done by June, but then we prioritize what's gonna happen. Um, and then the update comes and we realize we're kind of close. You know, we've taken four steps of the five to get to this tool. So we have these through uh, Friday updates. Um, most updates, whether it's troubleshooting, and again, if you have any problem with Wixi, let me know. And this way, if we know about it, I can just get you the answer straight away. Or if it's not, I can get it straight to the help team to, to look at resolutions. But uh, most Fridays at like, I guess, Saturday mornings at 12 a.m., um, an update will happen in Wixi for functionality or for content. Yeah, no, Samantha, you can totally take pictures. So if I brought it in, uh, camera, <laughs> let's see what happens here. There's a lot in the background. No promises, but we'll try it. The filter's going to go forever. It can only do so much with a person like me. Uh, so yes, from camera, it's going to work. Um, I unfortunately had a variety background. You saw frames and whatnot. So this one might be a little bit more difficult. But um, if the that there, hey, look at that. It's AI for you. I don't look bad. Still going to get rid of it. All right. Isn't it? I mean, I could put a mouth on me and make me the talkie too, by the way. I mean, you can really get the kids to creatively share and what know they know. And, and it doesn't have to be the grandiose in the unit. It could be something as simple as the lesson objective for today where they're doing it. It's like an exit ticket mentality. Is they're talking about, you know, whatever, whether it's a science I think of or, or, or math, you know. How do you convert an improper fraction to a mixed number? Well, whether you're a news reporter or it's just you with your mouth moving, 
you could do that or just straight up audio recordings. You're starting to allow opportunities for kids to to choose how they demonstrate that knowledge. And as long as they're semi fluent in that, you know, that's the thing is you can't if the technology takes into their assessment or their creation time, then that's that's where it's not good. You got to figure out how to uh, expose the students to these different tools and, and features and allow time for some confidence or kind of uh, understanding on how to use that tool. And then that's when they start to use it efficiently. And that's kind of Wixie's motto is, you know, easy in, easy out, and ideally time on task the entire time. And as you've noticed, I will keep rambling. It is 11.05. Tracy's going to stop the recording. You guys take the break, get to your next session. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Don't forget the attendance form was dropped into the chat. We are taking attendance for each session. So don't wait until the end of the day, fill it out for each and every session. And then uh, session two begins at 1115. Check the catalog if you need to, if you're kind of undecided where you're going to go. And we'll see you in our next sessions um, in, uh, yeah, you know, a little more than five minutes. And Scott, thank you so much. You are always such a fountain of amazing knowledge. <laughs> so um, everybody, let's give Scott a big round of applause. Thank you all so much. Much. Nice. And then, um, yeah, you. I'll see you guys um, 11.15 in our next session. And Samantha, I realized you weren't asking if you could take pictures and do it. You were telling us they could. So I appreciate you bringing that up. I just read it wrong in a rush. Have a wonderful day. All right. Bye, guys. You have a Nope, everybody's out fast. Marley, you're good? She's gone.